He's paying off our mortgage. He's giving us $50,000 cash. We don't, you don't have to work two jobs anymore. Words cannot describe how I feel. I am not normally a crier. I'm not. And for, for me to hear his journey and break down, it's just, I, I just can relate to him on, on so many levels. I'm going to put up all the money and open up a business together that I want us to be 50-50 partners. Stephen J. Klubeck is the chairman and CEO of Diamond Resorts International. I want to go undercover because we've been acquiring a lot of resort companies that have failed. I mean, I've seen those resorts prior to us acquiring them in their old state. And it's important for me to see how they've transformed and how well the Diamond brand has been taught. His first job was with Randy, the resort engineer. Since Stephen's wife said that he's not a handyman. Stephen at manual labor. Not so great. <laughs> we'll see how this will work out. What we're gonna do, we've got uh, an AC unit on the roof that has got an expansion valve froze up. Yeah. So we're gonna desolder that, put a new expansion valve in, evacuate. We're gonna do what with it? I'll tell you up there. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> they had to change uh, something on something, and Stephen was in charge of a fire extinguisher. So you're going to be, be in, in charge, charge of, of the fire extinguisher. Yeah. Bucket right there. Of water? Yeah, put that right beside you. It's got wet rags in it for sparks or anything that might get hot. There was some welding and some fire. No, yeah. Okay. Hang on. You don't see any flames, do you? No flames. Good. Hot though. There we go. Fire. Oh my God. Well, that happens, I guess. Things happen, man, when you're learning, and, and that's okay. You make it. You make you it. <laughs> yeah. All right. We got to go fix some light fixtures in the bathroom. Cool. Listen, this is like a big fear of mine, what? going down ladders. Now, Randy was great. He wasn't only supportive when Steven made a mistake while working, but also while he was going down the ladder. Jack, it's just a ladder. You can do it. Come on, buddy. Left foot, right foot, man. I do right foot, left foot. <laughs> safe to say that these two are a great duo. Now, Randy was familiar with what the company wanted from them regarding quality. We're going to replace these light fixtures. Replace them. Diamond has a standard that we want to get up to in this resort because we were just taken over by Diamond. So we want to bring our fixtures up to Diamond standards. While they were working on some light fixtures, Randy and Steven got to know each other a bit, or better to say, Steven got to know a bit more about Randy. We're looking for a business to get into, and so we sold it. Oh, that's great. And then they just filed bankruptcy. Oh my God, so you're left with. So how much the, did they owe you? About 240000 and was planning on that for retirement. Randy and his wife wanted to prepare for retirement, but that plan didn't go well. So is your wife working too? She is. She's Where's a school she teacher. Working? She's a teacher, but she's working at Home Depot. She took a second job there. And Stephen was saddened by what he heard, and he understood how it could be when business fell apart. And I've had business deals that have gone bad, so I have empathy for him. We're collectively a team, and it's my responsibility to worry about all these team members. But he also got to appreciate Randy and his hard work. You know, I think Randy's just a, a great guy. I mean, he's had a tough time. He and his wife created uh, a great business, and he got uh, laid away with a bad transaction. Randy left the biggest impression on all of the employees that Steven worked with. You have such a great attitude. We have to take care of our guests. That's, that's our number one. We, I know, and you get it. Without them, we have nothing. You have a mortgage? We do have a mortgage. What's your mortgage? About 150000 probably. Since Randy told him about his situation with a failed business, Steven wanted to help. You told me about that bad business deal you made, and you're hurting. So I'm going to pay off the mortgage. <laughs> Diamond Resorts is going to take care of that. And we're so glad for Randy. So Stephen did an amazing job. You taught me so much. <laughs> and I'm going to give you $50,000 in cash. Dan Dizio was the CEO and co-founder of Philly Pretzel Factory. Headquartered in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, with 120 stores on the East Coast, the Philly Pretzel Factory sells more than 100 million pretzels a year, producing $45 million in annual revenue. He put a little bleach on his hair, trimmed his beard, and was ready to go undercover. I'm going undercover to get a grip on the real business. I'm not down on the front lines anymore, and I think it really gave me a dose of reality of what the franchisees are feeling and go through on a daily basis. I hate it. You see, Dan didn't get to do much work in the first franchise he visited simply because he was busted. It looks like Dan, just like Dan. 
It's very hard to stand there and lie directly to someone. So I just couldn't take it anymore. I had to break my cover. Well, it is me, by the way. Anyway, the next task for Dan was to work in one of the stores where everything was going pretty well. I was just at one of the worst performing stores, and today I'm at one of our real success stores. So I want to take some information of what they're doing here, and we can replicate that in the Bridgeton, New Jersey store. There he met Marcus, the assistant manager. Marcus. I'm Michael. How you doing? Good nice man. Nice to meet you. you. I'll be training with you today? Yes, sir. Okay. A bit early for you? A little bit. This is what time you start every day? Every day, man. We get here at 4.30. It was early in the morning, and they had to get to work. Those pretzels won't make or bake themselves. I'm going to adjust our water meter here. We're going to put 20.1 liters of water in. Okay, so now the only thing that we need for this is yeast. Okay, so we'll get that in there. They made some dough, and Marcus had to teach Dan how to twist the pretzels. I got 40 done already, man. Did you get paid for pretzel or twist? Or? <laughs> that would be good, I hey, guess. Man, if I did, I'll be able to stop twisting soon. Now, Dan didn't want his cover to be blown off again, and since he already knew how to twist the pretzels, he tried hard to make them as badly as he could. Can I put them up? Let me tell you the truth. No, they're not. I had a few problems, Mike. I am definitely trying to throw Marcus off. I mean, I've twisted millions of pretzels in my day, so I do now make perfect pretzels. While they were making pretzels, Dan got to know Marcus a bit better. I have two daughters. Sierra likes pretzels, Brooklyn likes pretzel dogs. Oh, okay. I'm actually hoping they'll be able to stop by today before they go to school. Oh, okay. They're the best. Marcus revealed to Dan how he wants to have his own business. I still want to have my own business. Right. Not exactly sure what it'll be, but I'm actually in the process of applying for another job, starting off at 42000 and benefits. And how he'll probably change his job eventually. And since Dan liked his work ethic, he wanted to keep him. It's been so beneficial for me to go back to my roots and go back to those early mornings. Um, we can't afford to lose a guy like Marcus. I'm definitely going to talk to the franchisee to see what we could do to keep him. Later, when Dan revealed to his employees who he was, he had a special surprise for Marcus. Dan was just impressed by how Marcus managed the store. I gotta tell you, Marcus, that location was a struggling store. It didn't do well at the beginning. And I know you've been there about three years. Yes. And I don't think it's any coincidence that that store has thrived over the last three years. Oh, thank you. He opened a college fund for both of Marcus's daughters, gave him medical benefits, and made Marcus his partner. We'll make sure you get medical benefits. Because I can't have my partner getting sick. Partner? So hard work does pay off eventually. From an eight dollar an hour baker and sixty hours a week to like an impartial uh, owner, it's, it's amazing. I'm gonna be able to do so much for the girls. The president of one of the largest courier companies, FedEx, Lisa Listen, goes undercover in hopes that she'll get a unique perspective of what is happening in the company's busiest part. After working extremely hard on different positions and learning how hard people are working, Lisa met Mark. Mark was a courier for FedEx for 23 years. Isn't that amazing? While driving around with Mark, Lisa learned a bit more about him and his life. I came back working to FedEx this last year because I've been off work for a couple of years. Oh, yeah. I went through cancer. Oh, I'm so sorry so to hear I, that. Uh... You see, Mark was one remarkably hardworking man, a great parent to his kids, and a good husband despite his serious illness. I have a lot of support. Family's there for me. We have four children. Four. Three girls and a boy. And my wife and I just became foster parents. You did. Yes. So grab your tissues, people. When Lisa asked Mark how he was doing at that point regarding his health, none of us hoped we would hear what we heard. How are you doing now? Are you? I still have six tumors in my spine, and I have one on my right hip. Mark was terminally ill. Can they treat them? Not at this point, no. And we couldn't agree more with what Lisa felt. That was the most difficult moment for me, knowing that this amazing employee, this amazing human being, is battling a terminal illness. When Lisa revealed to the employees who she was, she got to talk with Mark a little bit more and tried to help him as much as possible. At one point, Mark told her how his teeth suffered a lot because of the cancer treatment. Going through the time with cancer also caused part of my 
loss in my teeth. So Lisa decided to help him with that. I know that there is a portion that it, the employee has to pay for. What I'd like to do for you, Mark, is when you're ready, we're going to pay for your employee portion of that, so it won't cost you a penny. Mark and his family were also sent on a cruise because he said that's what he would like to do the most. I'm going to send you and your beautiful family on a cruise. It's just my way of thanking you for being an incredible human being and for sharing your life with a complete stranger. That was indeed a heartbreaking episode. I do have one last request. I want a hug. You are an incredible person. I never realized that I would have that much of an impact.